Hi, I'm Jenny Taylor Martin, a director here at Edgar Casey ZRE. Today I'm speaking with Casey expert and author John Van Ockett about his new book, Edgar Casey on the Spiritual Forces Within You. Hi, John. It's nice Hi. to be with us today. Hi, Jenny. It's good to be here. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Um, I'm happy to. So the title of the book is Edgar Casey on the Spiritual Forces Within You. What are the spiritual forces? Um, according to Edgar Casey, the spirit is the life essence. Uh, so all the forces that have the spark of life or the essence of consciousness, he would classify as the forces of the spirit. And those forces are within us, but they often run in very low levels. And he wants you to enhance the forces of life within you. And therefore, the spiritual forces start to manifest more dramatically, uh, more vividly, and you are more aware of them. In one of the chapters, you talk about the difference between the soul and the spirit. Oh, yes. Can you explain that for us? Yeah. Uh, amazingly, for Edgar Casey, there was a distinct difference between soul and spirit. Spirit was the life force. Soul is the entity living in the life essence. Mm -hmm. And soul is experiencing and remembering and learning as, as it goes. So it's like a developmental force of, a, of an entity growing. Whereas all souls have the life force, each soul has a unique story. So what are some examples of spiritual forces and how you might develop them? I think the most striking example is uh, if you've ever seen a uh, dead body of a pet or an animal and a live body, that difference is the presence or absence of the spiritual forces, which are the life forces. Mm -hmm. So that light in the eye, that uh, radiance of, uh, of uh, life flowing through the physical body of the pet or the uh, human friend, that's the life force, which is the spiritual force. Mm -hmm. And when that withdraws from the body, then we see something that's no longer alive, animated, uh, present. In ancient Egypt, this was very distinctly drawn. The difference between when the ka, the spirit, or twin, was in the body and when the ka was beyond the body. And that was the distinction, the presence of the spirit or the absence of the spirit of the entity. Um, the soul in ancient Egypt was the Ba, and the soul is like the individual's collective memory and motivations, feelings, desires. That's the uniqueness of the individual, but the right. spark is the life force. Okay. So how do you develop your life force to have it be stronger? Um, an approach to enhancing your life force would first be to become aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we just usually live life. We get up in the morning and go, mm -hmm. and then we drop when we're out of energy and sleep, and the body tries to renew itself during the sleep cycle. Uh, but if you become aware of the energies within you and the shifts in your energy throughout a day, you are starting to become aware of the life force. And therefore, you can become more aware of what enhances it, nourishes it, lifts it, and what drains it, pulls against it, subdues it. Uh, and these can be thoughts. Certain thoughts are very uplifting. Other thoughts are depressing. Mm -hmm. And the life force seems to slip away a little bit, and you become depressed, blue, we say. Um, so becoming aware of the life force in you is the first step. And then there are many techniques that humans have written about for many years uh, as to ways you can enhance the life force. And you have some of those techniques in your book? The mm -hmm. book talks about um, how uh, the ancient Hindu concept of the Kundalini, mm -hmm. which is the uh, Elan Vital, the life essence flowing up and down your spinal column and your brain and all the firings of your nervous system, 
how you can actually um, add to that life force. We, we normally are always draining it by actively using right. it. And basically the ancient temple teachings are that you can reverse the flow of that energy and it renew your body, enliven your body, even uh, rejuvenate your body by mm -hmm. reversing the flow, which is usually done through meditation, uh, reflection, rest, uh, recreation. Whenever you start to draw the energy back into yourself, you actually have an opportunity to enhance uh, the life force in your body. Now, Edgar was very clear about the two nervous systems, so he even got very physical about this. Mm -hmm. The central nervous system is the active one we use. The autonomic nervous system has two parts. The sympathetic is the one that reacts to everything that's going on, but mm -hmm. the parasympathetic is the one that renews the body when the sympathetic calms down. Uh -huh. When you stop reacting and acting, now the parasympathetic can renew all aspects of the body, rejuvenate the cells, cleanse the body of toxins, do all the things that need to be done yeah. to make the body fresh and alive again so it can do more. And that happens during meditation, during it sleep? It happens naturally during sleep, yes, mm -hmm. but also you can intentionally do it by using very simple forms of meditation mm -hmm. or very advanced forms. And you talk in the book about dreams uh, being a connection to the spirit forces. Can yes. you explain that a little bit? Yeah. See, for Edgar Casey, our normal consciousness of our personality in the daily life is only a small tip of the depths of our consciousness, of our mind. And he sees the subconscious as just behind the veil, but present and can be accessed. But he says it's naturally accessed when you go to sleep mm -hmm. and the conscious mind lets go of everything. And then the subconscious is free to process, to correlate different things going on in life, to bring up uh, options, choices, situations that you're dealing with. And he says if you learn to understand the language of the subconscious or the soul mind, you actually will gain an advantage in your making better choices in your life, in being better prepared for situations in your life. So for him, dreams were an important part of living a full, rich life. Can you share the difference between the levels of consciousness and what you meant in the book by the phrase, the communion of the saints? Yeah, that's interesting. See, Edgar Cayce saw us having levels of awareness in our macrocosmic individual existence, but he saw the same levels on a much bigger scale in the macrocosmic universal existence. So on the microcosm, we have a conscious mind and personality. We have a subconscious mind and soul self that was alive before physical birth mm -hmm. and will be alive after physical death. And then we have a, a higher level that's uh, in the image of our Creator. It's a, a spirit or a godly level made in the image of God. And he uses the term the superconscious. So all of, all of those levels are both in an individual, but they're also in the collective where all individuals exist and they can have different levels. And he noted that um, a level just beyond where you and I are incarnate, but just beyond us, there's a level of discarnate beings, souls mm -hmm. like us, but not in bodies yet, coming or leaving. And they are in a different state. He nicknamed the borderland to this world that you and I know so well. Beyond that, there's a soul realm where souls are actually having life and activity, not in physical bodies, in mm -hmm. other dimensions. And he named many of them and shared what it was like. But even in the higher level of the spiritual realms, or what often history calls the heavenly realms, uh, spirits, us at that level, are actually having um, oneness with the source of all life, with the infinite intelligence within which all life exists. And he nicknamed this the community of the saints or the community of the seekers because they sought to, to become one with the source. 
And so it was fascinating to see all these levels. And then it gets a little strange when he says, you can coexist on all of them at one time. So you wow. and I can be here right now. <laughs> our soul can be quite awake and alert to its mm -hmm. realm and our spiritual self, our godly self, totally in touch with the source of life and thought and wisdom. And how do we get that higher self in touch? Well, that's a long process. Mm -hmm. One of his uh, keys was to assimilate the fruits of the Spirit. By assimilating the fruits of the Spirit, you actually grow and become the Spirit. And these were uh, strangely listed by the disciple Paul first, but then Edgar Casey picked them up. Mm -hmm. Love, kindness, gentleness, patience, understanding, these sort of things actually nourish the spiritual side of you. And Edgar pointed out that contentiousness, hatred, uh, backstabbing, um, self-glorification, self-gratification, they diminish the spirit and accentuate the ego. Yeah, to your detriment, and life becomes less than fulfilling or satisfying. And he explained that the more you applied the fruits of the Spirit, the more fruitful life became and satisfying. And in what way can someone use meditation? For Edgar Casey, meditation was a unique exercise that if you just budgeted a little time during the day, would add so much more to your life because most of the time we're running in the outer world in the personality self. And all you have to do is go back through the veil a little bit and you're in the deeper self, which has an interesting perspective on life that the outer self doesn't always get to see. It's kind of like we're on a boat on a river and we can only see back to the last bend in the river and only see forward to the next bend. Mm -hmm. But your soul is like a bird high above that boat and right. sees a much bigger picture. Right. Also sees many of the tributaries off of that river, your choices mm. that are coming and that you have made and their influence on you. And if you're way off track by a past choice that you now regret, it shows you a way to get back to the main river if that's what you are seeking. Mm -hmm. So he really wanted you to go back into that deeper level of yourself and it will give you a sense of expansion and buoyancy and a clarity in your vision and understanding. Just by sitting in that stillness, that silence, he used to say it will come as from out of nowhere, mm -hmm. sort of like an intuition. Mm -hmm. You see, you, you'll be sitting in the stillness, you're, you've got life going on, you've made decisions, you're going to make more, you have relationships, you're hoping to make them the best, you're hoping to be the best person you can be. Well, in the stillness, all of this bubbles and processes and you see correlations between things you've done and could do between relationships with certain souls and with other souls, which ones are actually... Uh, nourishing you, enhancing you, or which ones you are nourishing and enhancing, and which ones seem to draw you down, take you down, pull from you. And this quiet time is where this processing can occur. It's not so much thinking though. It's more like an intuitive awareness comes about because you're still, you're quiet, you're yeah. reflecting, in that, and you get a better insight. When you're with the babble of the personality, I mean, the choice could be good, it could be bad. Right. You'll find out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> the book also talk, you talk about the yes. seven spiritual centers and yeah. the way Casey described the book of Revelation. Of the book of the Revelation of the Bible has to be the most unusual one mm -hmm. on the planet. <laughs> because he took all of those images, the dragons, the fire, the uh, churches of Asia Minor, and said they were parts of you within right. yourself. Right. He correlated the messages to each of the seven churches as messages to each of the spiritual centers within your body, uh, these chakras, these mm -hmm. lotuses. Then he correlated them to your endocrine glands, which secrete hormones. Well, now you're talking about the power messages of your body. And each of the messages to the seven churches would affect your hormones. 
So you're thinking, wait a minute, this is powerful stuff. Yeah. This is secret magic. <laughs> I can actually change the hormonal messages in my body. And Casey said, yes, by reading and understanding what the message is to each of the spiritual centers and by feeling those and then living them, you actually cause your body to go, hey, he wants to change. He wants to yeah. secrete a different energy, a different dynamic. Uh, he wants to have a different emotional reaction to things, which we often want and very hard to do. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you change uh, hormones, it's a lot easier to do. Uh, for example, <laughs> when I was a young man, I had a very poor temper and I could not control it. It could happen so fast. Well, that's the endocrine glands, right? Okay. Adrenaline. Yeah. And it would jump into my blood system so fast. My dad used to say, I could throw a golf club further than I could hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but it would come so quick, I couldn't stop it until I s spent more time reflecting on that. And then somehow, before the adrenaline could overwhelm me, I was aware that I was losing my temper. And the hormones changed the adrenaline subdued, uh, but it took a long time for me to get hold of mm. that. And uh, you think meditation helped that? Absolutely. I, yeah. If I hadn't been doing meditation, if I hadn't understood the dynamics of the hormonal messages as they relate to spiritual forces, life forces, mm -hmm. uh, I would not have been able to do it as quickly as I did, likely. Now, Casey's version of the chakras, the order of them is different, a little bit different. Yeah, the Casey changes the order of the chakras. Actually, he goes more with the ancient, most ancient pattern for the kundalini flow, mm -hmm. which is the shape of a cobra in the striking position, which means, he says, the energy comes up to the base of the brain, goes over to the crown chakra first, right. and then to the great frontal lobe of the brain, and the master gland, the pituitary, with the hypothalamus right near it. So see, he's actually seeing the energy go this way. Now he does acknowledge that when the crown chakra is animated, comes alive again, it is so phenomenal, it affects the person deeply and they feel like they've opened themselves to the spirit. Mm -hmm. But then he explains that energy flows over to the great frontal lobe of the human brain and affects the pituitary gland, which changes the messages to the whole of the body. Besides the book of Revelation, the Casey readings often quote the Bible, and you share a lot of passages in the book. Is there anything in particular that you think is repeated frequently through the readings? It's not surprising that a man who read the entire Bible every year of his life mm -hmm. from cover to cover yeah. also had it deeply embedded in his readings, in his messages and discourses to people. It was everywhere yeah. because it was in his deepest uh, mind of what he kept rereading every year. Yeah. So he used it often to quote certain principles, concepts, precepts. Um, and you'll see peppered throughout his readings, a little bit from this book in the Bible, a little bit from that. But there are a few that are very commonly repeated in his readings. Mm -hmm. And one of them is Deuteronomy 30, where he says that the Lord says to each of us, I set before you this day, good and evil, yeah. light and dark, choose. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. Yes, I do too. Uh, and as you go through a day, if you think of your life that way, as you're talking to someone or reacting to a situation or a letter or a phone call or an email and you think, now, you can respond negatively mm -hmm. or positively. Yeah, it's as simple as that. <laughs> right? <laughs> With light or darkness, uh, good or evil, mm -hmm. uh, uplifting or down putting, yeah. criticizing. Oh, these these uh, enhance your skill at interpersonal relationships and mm -hmm. at improving your better self, more present than your less than ideal self. And these things often happen in your closest relationships. Yeah. 
You, you, you find them in your daily closest relationships more than you do in the, the broader ones. Uh, those are your real test as by fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks again for coming here. Uh, thank you for having me, and I'm excited about the new book. Me too. Thanks so much. Edgar Casey on the Spiritual Forces Within You is published by ARE Press and available at arecatalog.com.